I agree with the new zoning. I worked a long time on it with the town to get it to where it was so there was a balance. But we have vacant commercial properties in this town, and we need to develop those properties to bring in some more tax revenue to offset. We don't have. Uh, we need to work closely with the county. They want to map out shovel-ready business sites all over the county as well as our town so that we can draw on those businesses that are available to move here and get them building right away. Uh, we can work with Mary Ellen O'Dell. She's looking to bring a large pharmace pharmaceutical company to the county, and there's not enough space over there to, to, uh, to fill it. We could probably use Cybertron as one of the venues to get that business here. They want to bring 1,200 people to the region. They're going to need housing. They're going to need places to live. Some people want to live on the other side of the county and maybe over here. But that could spur the business in this town. It could spur building again. It could spur the housing sales to generate mortgage tax and revenues for the recreation department. These are all things that we need to look at, but we need to look at the whole big picture together. Uh, Supervisor Shea for rebuttal. For Mr. Erickson to say support of the zoning is a fantasy. That's a fallacy, and I'm not going to sit here and listen to it. At every step along the way in the zoning, he tried to thwart it. He went up and down nine, spreading a campaign of misinformation to business owners, riling people up, and that's what took the process a lot longer to get over the top of. This campaign of misinformation was spread around. We're going to take your property. All these fallacies that were out there. So I'm not going to let that slide. As far as growth, yeah, Cybercrime is on the IDA list right now. We submitted it. So you, they're out there. But as far as bringing in that uh, a, a huge business here and people to live here, you have, you have to strike a balance with that. Because suddenly, if you're looking at building a new school, if you want to talk about tax increases. You build a new school, you're going to see your taxes skyrocket. Thank you, sir. That's another myth. I mean, at the beginning of the first draft of the zoning, I was completely against it. Why? Because it took my business property and made it residential. It took the grandfathering right of my business property away from passing it to my children or selling it to another individual if I chose to get out of it. We worked hard and long on that to get a balanced document. Now we have it, and I do support it. If I get into office, I've heard people say to me along the path, you're going to repeal this. That's absolutely not. I'll work with what we have because I believe we got a balanced document finally. Uh, I believe early on in this uh, uh, zoning, when it first started, I talked to Bill Mazuka about forming a committee to get all bipartisan people into a room and go over this document together to speed up this process so we could all vet out our issues. That didn't happen. Supervisor Shea didn't want to do it. He said it's in the board's hands, so we couldn't go on Thank with you, that Mr. kind of process. Our next question will come from Ann Chestnut. <laughs> Gentlemen, Phillips Town has had several recent meetings in the afternoons, some with short notice. Do you think Phillips Town town government is open and accessible to the people? Uh, Mr. Erickson, would you begin? Um, a couple of weeks ago, I think at a town board meeting, they had a, a company come in that wanted to um, do a, a uh, a system where you can uh, let everybody in town know when there's meetings or emergency crisis uh, and by text message or it was an automated system. I believe that's a good process because then you will know when there's meetings, you know if they're canceled, uh, so that you're looking to attend, you can attend or you know, and adjust your schedule accordingly. Early on in the zoning process, it wasn't easy to know where the workshops was. Sometimes they were canceled, sometimes they were moved. I do believe that they're trying to be more open now because it's, a, it's an election time. And right now it wants to have an open government, but it wasn't as easy to get in and get your message heard back then. Thank you. Mr. Shen? The company we spoke with last week is called City Notify. We've had several meetings on this, and we do need to get a, a better um, information dissemination service, and we're working on that. We've always been open. It's never been, we're not trying to hide anything. Every meeting we have is in public. Does government go on during the day? Sure it does. We do things all the time during the day. Sometimes we have to have meetings during the day. If there needs to be budget transfer, transfers, we sometimes we'll do that during the day. It's important to be able to do purchasing during the day when businesses are open. So there are meetings that go on during the day. They're always posted. They're posted you know, on, on the website. They're posted in town hall. We, tr we notify the paper we're going to have a meeting. We've never been hiding from anybody with meetings. We encourage public participation. We always have. That's why we got such good turnout at these zoning meetings. We had 1,000 people participate in those, 400 people at a single meeting. That doesn't happen when you're hiding. 
So town board meetings we're getting sort of record attendance anymore, and that's a good thing too. And this turnout tonight, you know, that's this is a good sign. I'm encouraged by this. It's great to get participation. It's great to get the public input because in the end you get a better product. <coughs> Three or four hundred people at that zoning meeting was because citizens of Phillipstown, when I was president, advertised, sent postcards out, and we got the message out for people to show up and be at that meeting. The town did the bare minimum to get that. We have a small, my family has a little sliver of piece of property over in Southeast, um, and they changed the designation on that zoning. They sent registered letters out to every taxpayer in that district that was getting just their designation changed. I don't understand why the town couldn't do that here when the, when the complete town was being rezoned to get everybody involved. To say that everybody in town, even today, doesn't know that the zoning was passed. You go to Continental Village, they still don't know that there was a whole massive rezoning change. So the message didn't get out to everybody. I think the town could have done a lot more to get everybody, or at least acknowledge it by sending something uh, to their registered tax ID uh, address so that everybody knew zoning was going to be a, a big issue. Thank you. We have uh, one more question, and then we'll turn to our closing. Uh, Mr. Shea, do you have a rebuttal there? Yeah. I, again, I just from the start, we've always been about getting information out. So I guess we really do differ on this. Um, as far as Continental Village, we've had meetings down in Continental Village where we take the entire town board to go down there and sit with them. So Continental Village is aware there was a zoning change. We had town board meetings down there. They, we had Q&A down there. People did get notification about the zoning. It was a five-year process. Actually, 10 years if you count the comprehensive plan. So during that five years, there were hundreds of meetings, hundreds of notices in the paper, and the, the message went out. These meetings were also televised. So you know, we're going to try to get a notification system in where we can do a subscriber list and do a better job of that, but we've always been big on getting the message out as far as meetings. Thank you.